So I apologize for this technical issue. I don't know what happened, but hopefully yes. um, the voice is restored now. Yeah, yes? it's good now. It's good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank Perfect. You. Perfect. Okay. So let us uh, let us go back a step and show you that we are supposed to be covering those lines from inside the oral cavity in order to achieve good tightening. The objective is to improve the nasolabial lines and the marionette line. And we are using the Erbium Smooth Pulse with R11 3.5 to 3.75 joule per centimeter square with 1.7 hertz. And we are doing about 10 passes. So usually my protocol is to do five uh, passes and then one stacking uh, pass and then another five. So a total of 11 passes. And this is the this is the video where I'm doing the pulses, as we can see. So, so those are the pulses for the intraoral cavity and we can hear the sound of the laser. And uh, this procedure does not require any anesthesia. It does not require any cooling. Uh, it is very tolerable without any need for any kind of analgesia or anesthesia. Those okay, but Abi, do you, uh, sorry, do you, do you get any uh, irritation or inflammation of the oral mucosa that the patient should, uh, I mean, any downtime when you do the intraorally? Not at all. If we did it correctly with uh, homogeneous application of the lasers, of the laser pulses, passes, then it's okay. If someone who is just starting and did overlap a little bit more, we can have a small ulcer or something, but it shouldn't happen uh, with the right experience and with the right technique. Thank you. You are welcome. So this is the screen of my device and this is what I'm using. As I said, the R11 handpiece, seven millimeter spot, 3.75 uh, joules. And I go uh, up to two hertz now after, you know, some experience. I started with 1.7 and this is what I would encourage everyone to start with. Uh, and then after some time, you will be able to feel comfortable to increase the repetition rate and go a little bit faster without any problem. So after the, doing the intraoral, uh, I changed the protocol, the original protocol of Photona is doing the smooth lifting, the intraoral, and then the frac free and then the NDAC piano, and then the superficial peel. For me, I feel it makes more sense to go from the deepest point to the deeper, to the more superficial, and so on. And that's why I do the intraoral, which is the deepest point, and then I do the piano, which is for the subcutaneous tissue and fat, and then I do the frac tree for the derms, and then I do the herbimiac peel, or I do instead of the herbimiac peel, uh, the microderm abrasion before I start the laser. So the NDAC tightening, we are using here super extended second pulse mode. And I have to stress on the fact that this is the only NDAC laser in the market, in the international market, which is having pulse duration in the seconds. Any other NDAC system in the world is having milliseconds. So this is the only system which is having pulse duration in the seconds. So we are doing brushing technique for completing the full thickness bulk heating for the overall synergetic uh, tightening effect. When we achieve deep tissue heating, then we are able to tighten the skin in a very effective way. So this is the procedure and this is almost at the end of treating uh, half of the face and the neck. For me, the face and neck is one part, one region. I cannot treat the face without the neck and I cannot treat the neck without the face. And almost at the end, we can see the difference between the treated side and the untreated side. Can you imagine that all the neck was like this? And then by the end of the treatment, we are seeing how much the skin becomes tighter, partially due to the edema and partially due to the uh, collagen shrinkage and the tightening of the skin. And this is um, something which you are going to see on immediate basis, which is very impressive for the patient uh, to see this kind of improvement. Let me show you the technique. It is brushing technique. So we are just uh, painting the laser pulses on the surface of the skin. As we can see, it is associated with no pain. 
We don't need cooling. We don't need topical anesthesia. And we monitor the temperature of the skin because the objective is to achieve a temperature of 42 degrees, maintain it for three minutes, and then we are going to achieve an excellent uh, uh, result and improvement. Uh, yes, uh, there was a comment about the initial protocol of the Futuna regarding the intraoral, the PS03, and yes, that's true. However, also this is a modification which I suggested for Futuna and they listened because when we want to tighten, then we need to uh, cover 100% of the surface. Um, I don't want partial effect on the surface. If I use PS03, this is a patterned handpiece, so I'm not able uh, to uh, cover 100% of the surface. However, when we are using R11, then it is going to be much more effective in covering the whole surface of the skin. Uh, so, uh, any more questions? Interval treatment, what are the precautions before treatment? Uh, after treatment and the procedure related to prevention dental procedures. Actually, uh, uh, the, for the intraoral treatment, there is no preparation required. And uh, as, uh, at the same time, there is no post-procedure care required. It is a very mild procedure. Nothing is required before or after the treatment. There is no interaction between any dental uh, processes or any, any, any denture in the skin. Uh, you have to know that dentists are using urban yet, but with 100 times the power we are using. So it, is, it has a, a no risk on the teeth or the gums or anything. So we are going to carry on. And at the end, I'm going to uh, look at the questions, if there are any questions. Monitoring the temperature is very important because raising the temperature of the skin to 43, 42 degrees and maintaining that for three minutes is vital. And this is uh, the neck, the area I treated. And this is the neck in the area I did not treat. See the difference between the texture of the skin and this is immediate improvement of the skin and it's going to be well maintained as we are going to see later on. Uh, this is another video with the procedure where we are uh, seeing the, the procedure. In this uh, Futuna uh, accessory, it is the view matrix, matrix view, which is having a temperature sensor and we adjust the temperature, what is the minimum, what is the maximum. And then when the temperature is at the set level, it is being, giving yellow color. If it is below the set uh, level, it is green. And when it goes above the set level, it goes to red. And we have to be uh, doing painting, as we can see, while the skin is stretched in order to have better, better optical penetration. As we can see, the patient is relaxed. There is no pain. I'm not using cooling and everyone is happy. So this is the kind of improvement. We can get very clear, very nice improvement in the jawline. Laxity in the skin is improved. Uh, this patient didn't want, to go, didn't want to go for surgery. Of course, it is not uh, the same result of surgery, but I believe that we can all agree that this is very significant and very um, satisfactory uh, result for a patient who does not want to go into surgery. Again, another patient where we can see very nice tightening of the skin, very good improvement in the texture of the skin. And this is what we can achieve with this nice technique. And this is another patient where we did the smooth pulse with R11 handpiece up to 10 passes. And then we did the piano from outside uh, plus the frac three. And then this is three sessions, one month apart. And we can see the improvement in the nasolabial line and in the marionette line, significant improvement actually. And this is another patient, uh, three sessions, one month apart. And we can see the improvement in the nasolabial line and marionette line and the patient usually are very, very satisfied. And this was a patient who had mild laxity and one session was enough to achieve uh, such uh, nice improvement and result. And this is another patient which is having uh, only one session to get this kind of improvement uh, with a procedure which is associated with no downtime. No downtime at all, uh, except if we are using the superficial peeling, we can get some superficial peeling for a few days. 
Now, in order to target the dermis, we need to target both the hemoglobin and the water in order to achieve photobiostimulation and uh, stimulation of collagen. And the only wavelength which can target both the hemoglobin and the water is the 1064. And that's why nothing else was as successful as the 1064 when it comes to the non-ablative rejuvenation. Before the NDAC, they tried many other wavelengths. Those wavelengths were either targeting the water or targeting the hemoglobin. But nothing was able to target both the hemoglobin and the water like the NDAG, and that's why the results we are able to achieve with the NDAG for non-ablative rejuvenation is unmatched. So the parameters I'm using is the 1064. We can use the six millimeter with 15 joule or the nine millimeter with 10 joule per centimeter square. After some experience, I was able to increase the parameters more. If I'm using the six millimeter, I use 0.3 millisecond. If I'm using the nine millimeter, I have to use 0.6 milliseconds. We use five to 10 Hertz. We don't use cooling. We need to heat the skin up to 43 degrees for three minutes. We don't apply anesthesia because pain is a protective mechanism. And I need the patient to feel the pain and express the pain if the heat goes too much up. We don't do contact, so we are about, about two centimeters above the surface of the skin to uh, easily move the handpiece in painting fashion. And we don't apply topical steroids. The skin is going to be erythematous after the procedure, uh, but we don't apply topical steroids because topical steroids will suppress the inflammation, whereas we need the inflammatory process uh, in order to attract fibroblasts and synthesize new collagen. Monitoring the temperature is very important. And this is a study I uh, published with some colleagues in laser and surgery and medicine in 2011 about using this non-ablative scar treatment, dark skin uh, with the sub-millisecond NDAG. So any NDAG which does not go below one millisecond is not going to do a good job when it comes to rejuvenation. In this paper, we uh, combined both the NDAG was microderm abrasion. The microderm abrasion was used to improve the epidermis and the NDAG was uh, used in order to stimulate the collagen. And they did put our photos on the cover page. It was very impress impressive to be able to achieve excellent and significant improvement of dark skin uh, without any complications or without any side effects. So, so uh, we started the process with the microderm abrasion. At that time, it was the classic diamond peel, uh, which is a mechanical abrasion to remove the excess corneocytes, which is going to stimulate the proliferation and rejuvenation of the living cells. At the same time, this procedure is improving the lymphatic drainage because of the vacuum associated with that procedure. Uh, this was uh, done four times on weekly intervals. When the epidermis is really impaired, then we can do up to six sessions. Um, and this is associated with no down time or any complications. After the first session, we can do the laser immediately. And those are the parameters I mentioned before. So we clean the skin well, and then we start to do uh, the NDAG with the same uh, parameters and procedure. We are painting five Hertz, so five pulses per second. We have to be in painting mode uh, in order not to overheat the skin. Uh, monitoring the temperature is important. 42, 43 degrees for three minutes and uh, we are done. And this is the outcome where this is one of the patients we treated with severe degree of scarring after chicken pox. And we can see the degree and the extent of improving the, the skin, stimulation of collagen, not only at the level of scars, but the whole texture of the skin improved significantly. And this is something which is really reproducible. We can achieve it in many cases. We treated thousands of patients and um, I cannot remember a patient who did not get improvement. This is the patient who was on the cover page where she's having multiple problems, hyperpigmentation, uh, acne scars, large pores, active acne. And within three months, three sessions of laser, and six sessions of microderm abrasion were able to transform the skin into a much healthier skin. Another patient, we can see the improvement in the texture of the skin and how much the skin became much smoother. And this is a patient with acne scars. We can achieve excellent outcome. 
but this was associated with subcision as well. Uh, and we can see the excellent improvement when we combine the microderm abrasion with the NDA laser. With the same concept, we are able to achieve nice uh, lip rejuvenation where we are able to uh, stimulate the collagen, uh, regain the volume, the lost volume of the lip in a very natural and very normal way. This is a major difference between using fillers and using the laser. The laser is restoring the volume of the lip back to how it was a few years ago. With the fillers, sometimes we are overcorrecting, And this is something which many people are not happy with. We can see the plumbing of the lips and restoration of the volume in a very natural way. And this is something which is really reproducible. We do three sessions, one month apart. And then after that, we wait for six months for the collagen maturation. And we need to maintain by having two sessions per year. Uh, this is the procedure, a short vid video which is showing the procedure. So the, the pulses are not going to be applied on the lips alone because it's going to overheat if we apply it only on the lips. So we have to apply it on the perioral area, uh, focusing on the lips. This is going to improve the whole uh, region in a very nice way especially the lips which are going to be uh, restored back to how it was a few uh, years ago. Very simple procedure, requires no anesthesia, and the patients are usually happy. Many cases, they come whenever they are having wedding, they do the procedure, go put makeup and go to the wedding with very nice looking lips. This is the patient we treated, and we can see how much her lips are becoming uh, much more full and uh, having very nice contour at the end of the procedure. So this is the patient uh, after the 4D with the superficial peeling of the skin, smooth eye, uh, lip lays, uh, the intraoral, the piano, and the frac free, and the superficial peeling. And this is how the patient was looking immediately after, before the procedure. I think you can see the difference. When we are able to uh, conduct a procedure within 45 minutes and come up with a patient who is looking literally 10 years younger, this is a major achievement. This is really a major achievement. Look how sad looking she had, she was, and how she ch uh, changed and transformed within 45 minutes after uh, the uh, laser session. So the anti-aging uh, program, after we do those basic sessions, we advise the patients to come three, four uh, visits per year in order to maintain and improve the quality of the skin. Uh, usually those procedures are associated with no downtime. Uh, it's going to be uh, associated with reasonable cost because the patient should pay on monthly basis instead of per procedure. So it's going to be uh, distributed over the year with not a major payment. And it is going to be associated with uh, you know, affordable uh, monthly payment. No high expectations because when we are having this procedure, our main objective is to maintain the skin in good shape. So the patient is not over expecting. If the patient is having a scar, then after a procedure, they are going to be looking in the mirror every five minutes to see if the scar is still there or no. But when we are doing the anti-aging and the prevention of the skin aging, then the expectations is to keep the skin in good shape. And in 10 years, patients will look the same or even better. This is what we can promise them. And this is actually what we are able to achieve. This lady, uh, we started with her in 2012 and we can see her skin and how it was looking. And then in 2015, which means three years older, her skin is looking really much younger. So I would... I would think that we all agree that in this photo, the patient is looking about 10 years younger than here. Although she has uh, uh, grown three years, so she is supposed to be looking three years older than here, but this is not the case. The patient uh, became older, but she's looking younger. And this is her neck in 2012, and this is her neck in 2015. Here she was 68 years, and here she is 71 years. And her neck here is looking much younger and much better. And again, this is her skin. We can see the elastosis and the wrinkles and how her skin is becoming much better. 
and this is again her left cheek and we can see the improvement in the texture and the structure of the skin. This is another patient in 2012. Three years later, she is looking much healthier, much better. Her skin is looking really younger, although she is three years older. And this is another patient. And we can see over five years, her skin transformed and looking much younger than five years ago. And this means that we are not only stopping the process of aging, but we are reverting the signs of aging of the skin. And this is what we are able to achieve. Uh, Dr. Badavi, uh, the, the video doesn't have any sound. Should be like that or should I have a sound? There is, there is a sound, but uh, I don't know. Uh, there is a sound. However, I mean, the text is enough. It's okay. Okay. Yes. Sure. It is just music. So this is the intraoral uh, treatment. The intraoral treatment, which is targeting all those areas, uh, we can improve the skin texture with the FRAC3, which is with the original protocol of uh, Photona. It is the second step. I do it as the third step. The third step is skin tightening, which I do it as the second step. And then we do the fourth step, which is the light laser peel in order to improve the superficial um, uh, textural changes in the skin. And this is going to improve uh, restoring the youthful skin, tightening and volumization, improvement of the imperfections of the skin. Some before and after photos. The nasolabial lines improve, the texture of the skin improves, the wrinkles improve. This is the patient I showed. And we can see really that we are able to turn back the time. So we are able with this technique to improve the or reduce the wrinkles. We are able to improve the texture uh, and the appearance of the imperfections, reduction of the nasal labial folds and improve the tightening and the sagging. Now, does anyone, everyone need 4D? No. If we have skin laxity, but it is not affecting the nasolabial lines, then we don't need to do the 4D. We can do without the intraoral tightening. If we don't have skin laxity, then it's enough to improve the epidermis and do stimulation of the collagen. So it is something which we are able to tailor according to the need and according to the uh, situation. With that uh, procedure, I think we were able to find the fountain of youth and we can improve the skin and revert the uh, changes happening with aging back to uh, how it was a few years ago. Uh, one of the important things which I would like to hi highlight, this is the patient which I showed in the beginning. And we did for her the 4D procedure after uh, three sessions and waiting for three months, she came back saying that I did not improve. And this was her photo. So I told her, but I feel you improved. She said, no, no one is commenting that I have a better face. So I told her, let us see your before photo. And this was her before photo. But because the changes are happening gradually and slowly, sometimes it's not easy to uh, note the changes. So documentation and taking photographs is crucial. Otherwise, we are not able to defend our case because we didn't have these photos and the changes are happening gradually. Actually, when the patient so her photos of before, she couldn't believe that she got that much improvement and she was not observing it. And then she was very satisfied and she sent five of her family members and friends. So here, this is uh, something which I would like to emphasize that documenting and taking photographs is important when we are doing a procedure which is non-invasive and sometimes the, the procedure and the improvement is going to happen on a very gradual basis. 
thank you very much for your attention. And now, uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to text them. And I'll be very happy to go through the questions and answer uh, any questions which were not answered during uh, the presentation. Uh, yeah, sounds perfect. Okay. Uh, I see a few questions, Dr. Badavi, but yeah. I think you answered most of them. Uh, uh, I, just, I just would like to highlight that uh, this is going to be recorded. And I think for the members of uh, the uh, Canadian Board of Aesthetic Medicine, uh, the three mem uh, members are going to have access to the recording. Uh, so uh, hopefully, if you are not a member of the uh, Canadian Board of Aesthetic Medicine, I do strongly encourage you to become a member so that you are able to have uh, an access to great resources. Uh, I answered regarding the protocol, Dr. Uh, uh, Reza, if you have any comments uh, till I go through the questions, please go ahead. Oh, well, that was awesome. So uh, I actually have a question, Dr. Badavi, if you don't mind. So, uh, so how do you determine uh, when you're talking to patients about the number of sessions? So I, I saw that some patients, they get a very good result in one session. Some people, they need three or four sessions. Uh, so how do you to manage it when you are consulting with the patient. So are you going with the like packages and you, you yeah. sell as a package or how, how do you go that? Can you just yes. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, actually my protocol is to do uh, three sessions of the 4D, one month apart. And then I wait for six months and then we do maintenance two or three times per year. Now the improvement is going to be uh, relevant uh, and related to the extent of problems and damage. So if someone is having severe laxity, then we are going to see faster improvement than if someone is having less laxity. Uh, if someone is having minimal changes, then we need to maintain the skin in good shape. And in this case, uh, we are going to have 20-30% um, improvement and the remaining is going to go for prevention. So the expectation should be realistic according to the extent of the problem. But my protocol is to do three sessions on monthly interval and then wait for six months for the collagen maturation and then continue uh, as a maintenance program two or three times per year. So this is the protocol and I hope that answered your question, Dr. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But do, do you have also any any end goal? Like a, is it some, something they say, okay, this is the maximum I can get and I'm not going to go more than that? Or Are you talking about the, parameters? The, are you talking about parameters? Or are you talking about the number of sessions or what? No, 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 no. About the patient. So, for example, if you, uh, if when you assess the patient and consulting, so after a few sessions treatment, uh, so do you have any end goal and say, okay, this is the maximum result that I can get on this patient. I'm not going to do more sessions. Yeah, actually we do three sessions. The protocol is three sessions. We don't okay. uh, do a, as a package three sessions. And then after that, we do maintenance. Maintenance means uh, mm -hmm. we, are, we are rebuilding the lost collagen. We have to realize that uh, we are losing collagen on daily basis. So okay. uh, the, the newly deposited collagen after such a procedure is going to be staying in the skin for 13 years. However, the maintenance is required because every day we are losing some of our old collagen. And that's why the maintenance is going to help to rebuild the collagen. One of the important okay. things which I would like to highlight is that the difference between this procedure and any other procedure for collagen stimulation is the fact that this is targeting 100% of the surface and it is targeting all the layers of the skin. And this is unmatched because if you are doing micro needling or micro needling radio frequency or fractional laser, you are stimulating the collagen only. You are not tightening the skin as well. And you are covering only 20% of the surface of the skin, right? So you are not covering the whole surface of the skin. If you are doing radio frequency, you are tightening the skin, but the collagen stimulation is weak. So when we are doing the 4D, you are targeting the epidermis the dermis, the subcutaneous fat, and the under layer of the skin. So nothing is achieving the same quality of, of improvement of the skin. Okay. Now, there is a question about uh, if we are using 15 or 20 spot size. I started the 15, uh, but now I'm using 20, which is achieving better penetration, faster result, 
uh, faster endpoint. So I'm using 20, but again, I don't encourage uh, someone who is just starting to use the 20 millimeter spot because certain areas like around the brow, it's going to be more uh, painful. So I prefer that we start with 15 and then after some experience, we go up to the 20. Uh, the parameters for the lip, the same parameters for the NDX for the frac tree rejuvenation, which I mentioned, I use it for the lip. I don't do the peeling uh, step uh, for the lip because if the patient is having history of herbs, this can activate herbs. Plus, I don't see a value of the peeling. Uh, I think the frac tree with the NDX is enough to stimulate the collagen. And I don't believe that uh, we need to do the uh, peeling. Uh, of the lips, it can be associated with higher risk of um, hyperpigmentation, especially in darker skin uh, types. Um, so I go now to the chat box. Uh, uh, what are the precautions? Yes, I answered the precautions. Lip plays. Um, thank you for all your compliments. Less laxity or skin show minimal result. Why? If you have uh, minimal laxity, you expect minimal tightening. If you have uh, more more obvious laxity, then the skin tightening is going to achieve better improvement of the skin. Uh, so the more prominent result is going to be associated with more laxity. Uh, uh, both patients will have the same amount of collagen stimulation. But if there is better, I mean, more obvious degree of laxity, then the tightening is going to be shown better. The younger age are going to have less prominent improvement, but more collagen stimulation because their skin uh, is going to have to be more responsive. However, they are not going to show the same amount of improvement like someone who's having more laxity. Uh, uh, when someone is having less laxity, we have to let them understand and know that 20% improvement, but 80% going towards prevention. If someone is having more laxity, then we expect 40, 50% improvement, and the remaining is going to improve the structure and prevent further damage of the skin. So this is, this is what we expect. Uh, you are welcome, uh, Dr. Lamia. It's a pleasure to have all of you. And uh, there is one more question, frac three step, can we use 10 spot size? Yes, of course, you can use the nine or 10, there is no problem, uh, it is the same. Uh, and uh, sometimes even we can use 15, however, 10 is going to be the most uh, appropriate, 10 or nine, it is the same, Does, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, it is almost the same. So I hope uh, you liked the presentation, you felt that it is useful. And I'd like to remind you that tomorrow we are going to have two interesting presentations. One about the snoring and its treatment with the Photona laser. And the other one is about the hair restoration with the Photona as well. Uh, and hopefully it's going to be interesting. We are going to start at uh, 1.30 uh, p.m. Toronto time till 3 p.m. So um, uh, please calculate the difference and uh, we'll be very happy to see all of you uh, with us tomorrow. Okay. Again, thank you, Dr. Badavi, for uh, the great present the, uh, the screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, I see a lot of good comments, a lot, thanks a lot. Okay, so tomorrow is gonna be a very nice presentation. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a lot of audience tomorrow as well. It was a very tough week, actually, for us. We had a presentation back to back for a week, and we still have another three days. On Saturday, we have the injectables, and on Sunday, we have complications of injectable. But it was a lot of fun. So we had one week of static uh, education and lots of presentation. Thank you, again, Dr. Bedavi. Thank you, um, uh, Clarion, for supporting us. Uh, and uh, it was great. I really like a, a, a platform that has multiple uh, uh, devices on one platform and we can do a different treatment at the same time. That was awesome. Uh, Courtney, thank you very much for uh, arranging all this presentation today with the Canadian Board of Aesthetic Medicine. So 